This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Codeo, finds incumbency abuse and also vote buying and the use of state resources by some candidates to, to campaign as part of its pre-election monitoring. We'll delve into that particular report shortly here on Ghana Tonight. And as always, and some 18 days to Election Day, December 7th, will remain your election command center. Well, and the countdown is on, as a matter of fact, here on your election command center. We're looking into the collection of domestic election observers, that's Codeo. They've identified the, the abuse of incumbency as one of many issues likely to affect the cre credibility of the upcoming presidential parliamentary elections slated for December 7, 2024, some 18 days away from today. The, the report also makes other findings which we're going to be getting into shortly, but take a look at this. This is what's behind me. These are the, the key findings as, as captured in the Codeo pre-election observation report. First off, they observed an improvement in voter education, efforts by the Electoral Commission of Ghana, continuous domination of political campaign seen by the NPP and the NDC. Well, no surprise. Differential focus on issues in the campaigns by the MPP and the NDC, a generally peaceful political climate in, in the observed constituencies, instances of incumbency abuse, including the use of state resources such as public vehicles, government-owned equipment, that's the drip equipment for campaign purposes. That was captured in the Codeo report as well. And quite apart from that, they also put this as on the issues of campaign activities observed during the period house to house campaign. In fact, according to the Codeo, now this color code you see, the green represent the NDC's campaign activities observed over the period. That is the one month period that they, they, they did the monitoring. The blue represent the NDC, uh, that's the MPP, I beg your pardon, and the green, the NDC, and also the ash color code bar that you see there represent the campaign activities by the independent candidates. According to Codeo, 81% of their monitoring captured house-to-house -house campaign by the NPP, as against 78% house-to-house campaign by the NDC, and just a little over at least 20% by the various independent candidates. For meetings, they see, John, in fact, the M NDC surpasses the MPP when it comes to meetings and engagements. And you talk about campaign rallies, which is going to be the next. But specific reference is made of the meetings. The NDC, based on the Codeo's monitoring, had 70% of meetings and engagements with civil society organizations and then other groups ahead of the election. According to Codeo, the NPP had 65% meeting engagements with interest groups. And then you have the independent candidates also hovering just around the same 20, 25% in there. Campaign rally, guess what? The NDC surpasses the NPP based on the Codeo report with 44% of their monitoring seeing campaign rallies by uh, the N N NDC and 42% by the NPP. But when it comes to party match, the party match, they talk about the peace walks that have been organized by the political parties. We've seen a number of peace walks almost every weekend is happening in one constituency and the other. This is it. According to the Codeo report, 25% of their monitoring captured the MPP having more peace walks as, a, as against 20% by the NDC. And then the others as well captured in there as we're seeing right now. There's one that also bothers on the matter of vote buying as well, which we're going to be getting into right now, because it's an issue that really is of concern, especially to those who have been watching this particular space and how matters are raised, coming up with respect to the Codeo's own matters of vote buying. This is it. They say that observers also noted that instances of vote buying with 10% of reports received within the period indicating so. This involved people being given money or valuables to influence their vote. These incidents were observed in some constituencies in the Ashanti, Savannah, and Western regions. Vote buying. And this is one that never seems to go away when it comes to 
elections in this country. Albert Ahim is joining us right now on the telephone. He's the national coordinator of the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Codeo. Ms. Ayin, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana Tonight and also live on 3FM 92.7. I'm seeing in this report that the matter of vote buying you captured in the Ashanti region, instances of vote buying, Savannah region, Western region as well, where people, in fact, the candidates are giving money to people to entice them, induce them to vote for them. Speaking to some of these people in these areas, they've, they've resolved in that position that they would rather take the money and vote according to their conscience or their conditions of living. How about that? Well, that's very sad to hear anyway. But um, whether they are taking it or they are not taking it is not the question. Uh, the problem is that we have something in the election balance called uh, treating. Treating is an offense. Whether it's in the form of money, bribing somebody, or whatever form it takes. You see, we are trying to discourage these things because when a politician gives you money and comes to power, there will definitely be a way of recouping or maybe taking back what he spent. And that is why we are saying that it is not good or it's not proper that we encourage these things because we want people to assess candidates on their merit. If you are in my constituency and you are contesting, I would want to see you come to power and deliver. And uh, it's not to buy you know, votes or maybe give me money so that I vote for you. I mean, that, if we continue doing that, we may not get the right kind of people to lead this nation. That is why it is an offense, for example, to entice people with money. And uh, it's something that we should discourage. It, is, it doesn't promote democracy in elections. I, I see. But if it's an offense to entice someone with money to vote, it's been going on for only God knows how long I can remember. So if it's an offense, who is supposed to be applying the law? Who is supposed to be ensuring that those who are caught in some instances on camera trying to entice and induce people with money are punished to serve as a deterrent? You see, it's very sad. We don't have people who, who have bold, who have the balls to report these things to the police. You see, it's the individual who is supposed to make a report, for example, that we saw such and such a person at this constituency at this time giving money, if we're able to take a picture of whatever transaction that took place. I've always been hammering on this, that we always talk about it. But the thing is that people, who is going to bail the cat? You see, we have said that there has been some uh, vote buying in these constituencies, and I think we have sounded the alarm bell. The police can follow up on this matter and find out, for example, from our people who went to the field. Where did they see it? How did they record it? Was it something they saw with their eyes, or what did it happen? How did it actually happen? A follow up on some of these things will one day maybe put things right. You see, but, we have just written that we saw these things happening. Right. But if there's no follow-up, and it's just reported as a mere uh, electoral offense, that is not, you know, uh, encouraging. I and uh, like you rightly said, people will even be emboldened to do it the more okay. as we go on. But, Ms. Ayn, so if, if I get the understanding, you are expecting that the person who has been giving the money will be the one going to report that politician A or politician B is inducing me with money, so go and arrest the person. I mean, that's, that would be wishful thinking. I mean, in this economic times, that if, if you're giving somebody money to go and vote, you would, you would expect that the person will be the one going to report? No, no that's not what I mean. I'm talking of you, for example, being a citizen. Okay. You are in a constituency, and you see clearly that somebody has handed over money to somebody in, 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 
in your constituency, look at what happened in the Jesus the other day. Right. Where a lady was standing in the vehicle mm -hmm. and was throwing money, just giving people money. And, you know, I'm not sure that woman has even been apprehended or even uh, punished right. for what she did. She was seen all over, and I'm sure everybody in Ghana saw it because it was telecast live. Yes, indeed, it was. Somebody was giving money to the people. And it was, you know, in bundles, throwing them, and they were, they were scrambling for the money. Mm -hmm. You see, it all boils down to public education, teaching our people what is supposed to be done. We need to really tackle the issue from the grassroots. That is an offense to give somebody money to entice somebody with food or whatever it is so that the person can vote for you. You see, and it's not only done during campaigns. Even during the, the last by-election in... Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, 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 is it a is it, no, Kuma yeah. died and there was this by-election. Yeah, uh, just so... A whole uh, just, yeah. prominent guy in one of the parties was going around. And when he got to the place where the people were seated, mm -hmm. he gave money to the to the, the polling assistants in an envelope. And what was it intended for? To do what? To entice them to do what? If it was to ask them to use it in buying food, that should have been done earlier. You knew they were going to go to the polling stations and they would need money to buy food. Mm -hmm. So it is not proper on your way doing monitoring and then you drop money on the table. You see, it's, 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 it's something that we should not encourage. And that is what has been going on. People have been doing it as no punishment for anybody. Uh, and that's why I'm saying that it, 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 it behoves on me and you, all citizens, to be bold enough to sometimes report some of these things. If you report I, and nothing happens, that is, it's, it's okay. You have reported and maybe nobody took any action. I, I, I see. But you see, we need to set an example that these things are not good. But Ms. Ayan, if you, if you say that uh, we all saw a, a prominent guy in the Ajiso by election giving money to electoral officers. We know who the person is, so I, I don't see why you should struggle mentioning the name. That's the, the Kwadaso MP, uh, Dr. Kinsley Nyako. I mean, we know, because the person was captured on, on, on video doing that. And you shouldn't shy away from mentioning the person's name, should you? I've said it before. This is not the first time I'm talking about it. I see. So now that you've spoken about it and you've indicated that there are there are laws to deal with this, but this is going on in the full glare of the public without any regard to whatsoever law that is meant to check vote buying. The special prosecutor is investigating some cases of vote buying. We don't really know the end of it as, as we speak. Uh, the Ghana Police Service as well got into this particular Dr. Nyako Smata that you spoke about. We, we don't know what's going on, at least we don't have any updates as yet as to the investigations into why Dr. Kinsley went to give them that envelope that he said he was giving them for lunch, which we have that video, we'll put it on the screen shortly. I mean, th does all of this disappoint you that even though we have some form of investigations instituted into these cases of alleged vote buying, really, we don't have, seem to see the end of it with no sort of um, update on the investigation so far. In fact, that, that's the video right now that you, you, you talked about, uh, Ms. Ahin. That's the, the MP for Kwada. So, in fact, he's a deputy education minister in charge of TVET now, Dr. Kinsley Nyako, captured on video, giving the electoral officer money, and eventually he came to say that it's meant for lunch. Investigations were instituted. We, we don't know uh, what the update of the OSP investigation into this matter is. And so, if, if this is captured and no punitive measure is instituted, what do you expect? Why not? We started talking about vote buying long ago. It's something that is there, even in their primaries. When the parties are conducting their primaries, involving they themselves, these things happen. And the parties are worried. I remember the last time we met some of the parties in the, in the CDD and we were talking about uh, uh, you know, financial problems within the party and the way to keep them. These things were mentioned by the parties themselves. 
that they need to curb it. They need to stamp it out so that people will not, you know, what it means is that if you don't have the way with all, you cannot contest. You may be very good, you can contest an election, win, and then maybe help your people. But once you don't have the money, it means you cannot compete. Because people with the wherewithal who, who have the money. In, in, indeed, and that's exactly what it is. And, and the concerns about the monetization of our politics and the dangers we're faced with. Thank you. Ms. Ayin Abetahin is the national coordinator of the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kodeo, joining us on the telephone. But in fact, we, we have, I'm going to show you what the special prosecutor, at least a number of these cases that um, he has gotten into the instances and allegations of vote buying. We'll put it on the screen right now, the special prosecutor's um, investigations into matters of vote buying in a number of elections that have gone by, in some by-elections and, and also some primaries of the various political parties as well. You see that captured um, in some publications as well that the special prosecutor himself uh, put out there. And as we speak, we, we've not, at least as of now, had any updates so far of the current state of affairs when it comes to investigation. That's going to be on your screen right now. I want you to take a look at this. There were f five people who were captured in publications by the special prosecutor of allegations of vote buying. Take a look at this. And the first two. The first three, um, you'll see there on the screen, and one uh, wanted by the OSP for corruption, corruption related offenses in respect of public elections, especially vote buying. These were the three. If you recall, their pictures were published, wanted persons. As of now, we don't know if they were arrested. And then this other three as well. Another instance of the OSP public, the publication of some persons who are involved in allegations of public elections, especially vote buying. Six people, at least, per the OSP's publications, the allegations, and their involvement in vote buying. We don't know as yet. In, and then Dr. Kinsley Nyako as well. So this is a matter on the table. As concerning as it is, the threat that it, it poses to our democracy, and we're dealing with it on a daily basis. 